Chapter 31 Downward Dive Sixth Light Day of Cantal, 819 Ten Days Until Sown The rushes along the banks make for poor cover. The river meanders south through gently rolling hills, making the likelihood of being seen all the greater. Where is the torrent we endured underground? I must rely on myself to generate any pace. The river turns west, and I rest long enough to see if my hands still shake. There are still noticeable tremors, but how much is from chills, and how much from drained powers. At least rowing will warm me up. As I get some distance from the gorge, oaks and aspens start to appear along the banks. The occasional willow, with its pendant branches skimming the water, makes an appearance. At last there is some cover. Ahead is a larger, more powerful waterway that makes my river feel like a muddy little stream. My boat is thrown against the left bank. I angle into the wave and attack it, only to be spun around and tossed against the bank again. Finally, the river widens, and I'm not so close to either bank. The river slows, and I notice most of the trees on both banks have been felled. There must be a beaver dam ahead. There's not much light left in the day, so I stop under one of the last untouched willows. It is a small tree, which is likely why it hasn't been taken yet, and it sits upon a small island within the beaver-dammed lake. I beach the boat and turn it upside down. The deer hide should melt right into the shadows under this tree. At least it better, for the bank is only several steps away. I have nothing to eat and I dare not start a fire. It's going to be a long night. There's been no sign of the obsidian lord, but I know the water on the opposite side of the beaver dam will be sluggish. In direct sunlight, I'll be an easy target. Belanos has almost retired when I hear horses trotting along the river road. I remain still as a stone, even as they move closer to me. He'll want to head south to Dartmoor. So have your men patrol the southern shore of the river, a low-pitched voice says. Yes, Lord, is Guthsid's response. I grab my protection amulet from around my neck and hold on to it with both hands. In the still air, any sound I make will travel. I dare not move and give away my location. The horses continue their trot off to the west. How did he know that I am going to Dartmoor? After an eternity of waiting, I can no longer hear their presence. I peer out under the boat shell and confirm that I am alone. As Belenos rises, there are no clouds as far as the eye can see. I paddle myself to the northern side of the river before dawn, carry the boat around the dam and put in from there. I paddle at a steady pace, making sure not to be heard as I pass the dam. I'm frightfully exposed once again, but I have no choice. The riverbanks squeeze closer together, and the current picks up. At last, something is going right. A huge willow grows on the southern bank, half in and half out of the river. I see movement from within the canopy, and spot an arrow as it comes streaking at me. I dive into the water, flipping the boat on top of me. Two arrows in quick succession fly through the boat's frame. Keeping my head down, I grab the boat and keep it between me and the southern shore. The occasional arrow hits the boat. I take a quick look. There are three men emerging from the tree. They mount up once I'm past and keep pace with me on the south bank. An occasional arrow embeds itself into the boat, but it's only target practice for them. The warriors take off farther ahead. This can't be good. There is a low wooden bridge around the next bend spanning the river, and six Koratani archers are waiting for me. Going to either bank would mean fighting all six warriors with only a paddle. I get a read on the speed of the river and the distance to the bridge. There is turbulence on the north side of the river, creating foam on top of the water, so there are rocks just beneath the surface. My only choice is between the rocks and hardened warriors. I dive under my overturned boat and gather my breath. The boat won't give adequate protection, 
but showing my face again will surely be the last thing I do. I hear the men joking amongst themselves. I have to be close. Taking one final breath, I dive and swim well below my boat. I kick with all my might and keep pace. My right hand slams into a rock and I grab it instinctively. The boat's shadow passes me. I ball my fist and give each stroke the desperation it deserves. My lungs burning, my head breaks the surface under the back end of the boat. Greedily, I steal a fresh breath. The whole frame sinks a few inches before rocking back and forth. What are they throwing at the boat? An axe breaks through the woven branches, letting sunlight shine through. I'll never make it without the boat. I propel myself upward into the right side of the boat. The boat tips over, sending my assailant into the river. I pull the boat against my exposed head and swim for the northern shore. The man shouts out his distress. He doesn't know how to swim. The thrashing man is pulled farther and farther away. Behind me, the remaining men pepper my coracle with several arrows. Giving up the tactic, they mount their horses and once again keep pace with me on the southern shore. They leave their comrade to his watery grave. The river is reasonably wide, so I should be protected from them for a while. I check the northern bank. Maybe I can land there and shake off my pursuers. The Black Lord emerges through the brush to the northern bank ahead of me. I flip the boat over once again to stay out of his direct sight. Fearing him more than the men, I move to the centre of the river. He is too content to ride at pace with me. And why not? I have no way to escape. At some point, I'll have to choose between two very bad options. I can smell salt in the air, so I know that my dilemma will end very soon. The river widens out, and I'm far enough away that no more arrows are coming my way. It is nearly midday, and there is no cover. This sorry little boat riddled with holes is definitely not seaworthy. To the north of me, there are mudflats stretching off well into the distance. The low tide has left delicate undulations in the mud. If my life were not imperiled, I might find it pretty. The Black Lord won't be able to cross the flats, but neither will I. One possible avenue of escape for me is eliminated. The Obsidian Lord pulls up short of the flats on a small rise, and waits for his men to finish the job. The road south of the river turns away as the ground gets soft, giving me some distance from Girthsid and his men. Ahead is a tor with steep cliffs jutting into the sea. The Strait of Eru begins tossing my boat about. I won't be able to hang on to it for much longer. On the northern side of the tor, the scree looks scalable. I release the boat and swim for the loose rocks. I send plenty of rocks into the water, but I make the top of the tor. I've bought myself a little time, but only a little. I'm still trapped. A small fishing village sits on the western edge of the tor. Going that way will only result in more people being enslaved or killed. A cry of discovery lets me know that my pursuers have found a path to the top. With nowhere left to run, I wait for my doom. One of the men takes aim at me. I stare down the arrow without flinching. Girthsid slams his horse into the archer's mount and forcibly lowers the man's bow. There will be no easy way out for me. My arms begin to tremble and I lose my nerve. Breaking into a run, I head back to the northern edge. I stare down at the rocks below. Even now, I can't bring myself to jump. I scan the ground and laugh at my predicament. My only weapons are the loose rocks themselves. Girthsid's head rises above the tor and he smiles at me. He moves off the path and waits for the rest of his men. They have no reason to hurry. I close some of the distance between us, stepping in loose gravel as I go. If only I had a sling, I would at least have a chance. At some point, I lost my bone knife so I can't cut a crude sling from my robe. There will be no ballads sung about this meeting with the Obsidian Lord. My thoughts become clear. I'm a dead man. I know this to be true. If nothing else, I have to make sure that the silly orchid 
I carry does not fall back into his hands. That is all I have left to fight for. I plant my feet in the rocky soil and await their approach. Girthsid signals his men to halt. There are no taunts. The silence is unnerving. I review my options again, hoping that I missed something. Behind me is a steep slope that abruptly drops off into sea rocks. I will find no escape there. Girthsid and his men have blocked off any retreat. There is the village, but I would only bring death and destruction upon them as well. No, I didn't miss anything. Girthsid draws his sword, and his men take to their axes. I run as fast as I can to the sheer cliff behind me. Certain death awaits, but at least it'll be quick. The obsidian lord figures out my plan, and he shouts for the warriors to spur their mounts to overtake me. I skid to a stop at the very edge of the cliff. I am just a step away from my certain death. Girthsid and his men are galloping hard. They'll never stop in time. I jump for the rocks below before pulling up as my wings beat furiously. I turn to hover in the air as I see six men on horses ride over the cliff and fall to the rocks below. The centre man leaps from his steed in an effort to grab me. I dodge him easily. As he falls backward, his hand remains outstretched, reaching out for me. How odd. The spilled blood from the humans and horses below begins to fill the air. It won't be long before many others will discover this easy meal. I land on the rocks near the strange human. The back half of his head cratered. He stares out at nothing now. The eyes will make choice morsels. The word Girthsid flits into my mind. What a strange word. I cock my head and ponder it for a moment. Girthsid. I seem to know that word somehow. A human in black shouts out his rage from the shore. My human mind breaks through and gains ascendancy. But for how long? I leap into the air and make for Dartmoor. Yes, the moor is to the south. I must go there and find my nest.